First, the United States, Britain, and France opposed a UN Security Council statement that would condemn the attack on Iran's embassy compound in Syria. Iran says its response to Israel was a limited operation with minimal force only to secure its rights to legitimate defense and to punish Israel. Since Tehran's operation, the world has been waiting for a possible counterattack by Israel. However, Iranian President Ebrahim Raisi cautioned Israel to avoid what he called any new act of adventurism. Otherwise, it would receive, quote, another blow much harder than a retaliatory strike than Iran launched. Iran also warned the U.S. that if Washington enters the confrontation and supports Israel, Tehran will consider all the American bases in the region as military targets. Following Iran's warning, U.S. President Joe Biden reportedly told the Israeli Prime Minister that Washington will not join any offensive counter-strike on Iran. Two days after Iran's retaliatory attack on Israel, the general atmosphere in Iran is calm. All flight restrictions of the airports across the country have been lifted, and people are relieved that there is no war, at least for now. Iran's foreign ministry says during the retaliatory attack, the country hit an intelligence center inside Israel, which had been used to lead all the anti-Gaza operations since October last year. It is impossible to be worried about peace and security in the region, and at the same time to ignore seven months of Israeli violations, war crimes, and genocide in Gaza and the West Bank. Iran says Israel has now learned that Iran's strategic patience is over and any further violence will not go unanswered. CGTN, Tehran. So, what are Israel's options? Will we see a bigger conflict in the Middle East? To address these questions, let's bring in our panelists. From Tehran, Mohammed Morandi is the professor of English Literature and Orientalism at the University of Tehran. Here in Washington, D.C., Dan Arbel is a scholar in residence at the Center for Israeli Studies at American University. Khalid Jashun is the executive director of the Arab Center here in Washington, D.C. And from Virginia, Michael Malouf is a former Pentagon senior security policy analyst. Welcome to all of you. Mohamed Marundi, uh, you know, as we heard in that report there, Iran launched this attack uh, on Israel using hundreds of drones and missiles. We were told that most of them were intercepted and that there was little damage, although nobody has found any independent confirmation of this damage assessment. But the question is, what was the goal behind Iran's attack? What did Iran hope to achieve? Well, there are two important things that we have to keep in mind. One is the operation itself. The Iranian sent very inexpensive and uh, uh, old drones that do not have the latest Iranian technology. And uh, each of them costs around 10,000 pounds. And they told the Americans well in advance. And so when the drones got there, the Americans and the Israelis, they used very expensive uh, anti uh, aircraft missiles to target those drones. And then Iran also sent a series of old missiles. Uh, these were decoys as well. And the Americans and the Israelis did the same. Most of the heavy lifting was done by the Americans. Uh, so uh, ultimately, the United States and the Israelis, they spent over $1.3 billion uh, on striking these drones and depleting their reserves, whereas the Iranians probably spent between, I don't know, 10 to 15 million dollars. So I think that was important. The Iranians learned a lot about their capabilities, whereas they revealed nothing about their own. And then Iran fired rough, somewhere between 10 and 20 drones, uh, sorry, missiles, which were more advanced, but not the latest technology. And those hit the two targets, one, an air base in the south, which was used to bomb Gaza, but also the embassy, and one, a an intelligence uh, facility in the north, which I think belongs to the Air Force. So both were hit by uh, those missiles, and those were the key mm -hmm. missiles. The second issue is that uh, the Iranians have changed the equation. Uh, until now, the Iranians have been uh, strategically um, patient. They wouldn't respond. 
to uh, Israeli assassinations and murders. But after the Israeli sit, the embassy in the U.S., France, and England sided with the Israelis and the U.S. Security Council, the Iranians decided to strike back. But more importantly, 